a super quick rule of thumb that allows you to calculate inductor and capacitance values if you want to make a tuned circuit that resonates on a particular frequency. This could be handy for particular transmitter, receiver or antenna work. First thing you need to do is to convert the frequency, which is usually in megahertz, into wavelength, which is usually in meters. Simple formula, just take 300 and divide by what you want to convert. For example, 300 divided by 150 megahertz gives you 2 meters. The amateur band is actually 144 to 148 or 144 to 146, depending in what country, but this is near enough to 2 meters, so we often just call it the 2 meter amateur band. Similarly, on HF frequencies, a frequency like 14 megahertz or 15 megahertz, 300 divided by 15 gives you 20 meters. You can also go reverse, convert wavelength into frequency, 300 divided by 20 gets us back to 15 megahertz. So just a simple formula allows you to convert wavelength into frequency and vice versa. Based on dividing 300, which is derived from the speed of light, by what you already know to get the unknown. Often we don't even need to do that because a lot of us know that 3.5 megahertz is the 80 meter band, 7 megahertz, 40 meter band, 14 megahertz, 20 meters, and so forth. Not exact, but it's a good approximation. So let's say that you want to find out the values for a tuned circuit that resonates on the 7 megahertz band, which we know is 40 meters. We take the 40, and as a starting point, we can just use that as a capacitance. 40 meters, 40 picofarad. You'll now require a particular one value of inductance to resonate that on seven megahertz or 40 meters wavelength. You can go through the formulas, there's online calculators, but as a rough rule of thumb, what you can do instead is take the 40 meters, divide it by 10, so you get four, and multiply it by three. That gives you an answer in microhenries. Therefore, 40 divided by 10 is four, times three is 12, and there's your answer, 12 microhenries. Now we'll go to another band like 14 megahertz, or 20 meters. When you go lower in wavelength, you also go lower in capacitance and lower in inductance. So for 20 meters, you can have 20 picofarad and you do the same thing as we did for 40 meters. So divide 20 by 10 and we get two, then multiply it by three and we get six. So six microhenry will resonate with 20 picofarad and give us a resonant frequency of around 14 and a half megahertz. So just a rough rule of thumb. Now I should mention that even though I've given you capacitance and inductance values, these aren't the only ones that will resonate on a particular frequency. So if we go back to our seven megahertz or 40 meter example, we had 40 picofarad and 12 microhenry. But if you wanted to, you could double the capacitance so the 40 picofarad becomes 80 picofarad, but then you need to halve the inductance. So the 12 then becomes six microhenry. So a six microhenry inductor will resonate with 80 picofarads and it will resonate on the same frequency as our 40 picofarad we had before with 12 microhenry. The difference is that when you calculate the reactance measured in ohms, it's different with different values. That may be important in some cases.
You can interpolate between these values. For example, if you had five microhenry or 4.7 microhenry, then you'll find that 100 picofarad will resonate with that. Again, on seven megahertz or 40 meters. In practice, you may need to make small adjustments. There's things like parallel capacitance or stray inductance, those sorts of things. But this will give you a rough rule of thumb of how you can calculate the values of inductance and capacitance to resonate on a particular amateur band. To summarize, you take the wavelength in meters and that's your capacitance. But to get the inductance, you take your wavelength in meters divide it by 10, then multiply it by 3. And then you'll get the inductance in microhenry. And if you want, you can halve one, that means you must double the other, and vice versa. That could be handy if you've got a capacitor or inductor of a particular value, and the other one is variable, so that you can then set them up together and get them to resonate on your desired frequency. So I just thought it was worth a quick video, quick rule of thumb, Calculating inductance and capacitance for a certain resonant frequency or wavelength, it's easy. Do it yourself and let me know in the comments what circuits or applications that you find this useful for. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books, Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.